Good morning, good afternoon. This is Mark Richardson with Vibrant Technology. And I welcome you again to another ODS videos webinar. And today we are gonna look at aliasing and title today is aliasing happens and why. Um, we're gonna talk about some of the challenges with uh, sampling rates, the lower sampling rates with uh, digital cameras and how that affects uh, viewing the higher frequencies. And then we will talk a little bit about some new tools within ME Scope for unfolding the aliased orders and uh, recovering those higher frequency data. Um, I'm joined as usual with by Dan Ambray with Full Spectrum Diagnostics. And um, just a couple uh, notes before we get started. We are recording this webinar. So if you missed anything uh, or you wanna go back and review something, uh, we will get a recording out on our YouTube page and you can find that at youtube.com forward slash vibrant technology and uh also we have a all of our webinars are out there as well if you want to go back and review some of the older webinars um and uh let's see here with uh if you have any questions we got a questions dialog box on the right hand side of uh, the go to webinar panel there feel free to type your questions in there and we will get those questions answered at the tail end of the webinar uh, with that, let me hand things over to Dan and we will get started. Uh, good morning or afternoon or whatever. Uh, my name is Dan Ambry from Full Spectrum Diagnostics. Uh, we have a, a really interesting uh, webinar today. Um, we're going to identify alias frequencies and expand access to the harmonic orders above F max. And if you're a signal processing guy or a vibe guy, one of the first things you learn is F max is the end of the line. You don't get anything more than that out of your spectrum. Well, that's not quite the case. You can um, pull some of those uh, alias frequencies out. And we're gonna talk about aliasing and what it means, a little confusing. Um, and actually, if uh, if you guys are okay with it, Mark, um, I give you access to the, the PDF of this uh, if Great. anybody wants to download it, because it, it does take a little bit of time to think about how all this works. Um, when we get to the end of it, you'll be saying you don't understand it, and then right at the end, it'll all come together. So you know, bear with me. It is a, it's a tough top, top topic for anybody, but uh, what we're trying to do is get the most out of that frequency range, um, limited by the aliasing video. So a little uh, little uh, summary here, uh, nomenclature and so forth. Aliasing is the property of a digital Fourier spectrum, which a high frequency component in the frequency spectrum of the signal takes the identity of a lower frequency component in the spectrum of the sampled signal. In other words, the sampling rate is too low. And one of the classic examples of this is in Western movies on TV where there's wagon wheels um, and the wheel is moving uh, at a certain frequency and the, the tape or film is processed at a certain frequency. So if you had like 30 frames a second or something like that for um, the human eye to detect nice smooth motion, then you can alias frequencies uh, below that uh, that are actually high frequency artifacts in the spectrum. And that's a whole bunch of mouthful of words, but um, we'll get we'll get to that a little bit uh, in, the, in the start here. Uh, the problem with digital videos, there's no way to band limit a video signal before it's sampled with a digital camera. Uh, the sampling rate of the digital camera is fixed and it's too low. So we can't oversample the same way we would with accelerometer data. We have a couple great things going with accelerometer data. Is instead of, like in video, the standard is, is a Nyquist factor of two, meaning you your sample rate and your uh, F max or a uh, factor of two different. Okay, so you cut your your sample rate in half and that's your F max and you can't go above that. That's the standard principle. In uh, signal processing with accelerometers, uh, you can oversample more than two uh, 
as a NIC risk factor, and usually it's 2.56 is what uh, shows up in most of the uh, boxes that you carry around and do trending data. Um, and there's no anti-aliasing frequency uh, in a video. In the sampled frequencies for your, your trending and your accelerometer data, you have a hard low pass filter that uh, ends, it ends at uh, F max. So anything above F max, uh, higher frequency peaks or something that you didn't measure um, can't punch through and corrupt your data. And it, it turns out it's easy to fix with the solution that uh, the Emuscope ODS video guys uh, put together. Uh, the software can detect non-aliased and alias frequencies for us, which it's very quick to do, very easy to do. You can unfold the frequency spectrum and reveal the uh, alias harmonic orders. And these frequencies can be animated. And you do nothing about changing the phase. There's no changing the amplitude. Everything is the way it should be, except those frequencies were initially in the wrong place because of an artifact in the way we process data. So we'll, we'll show you how we turn that around and use it to our benefit. This is uh, using cell phone camera for video analysis. A little summary of that, a little setup I have in my office where I, I took some data um, on a little fan that, uh, just a heater or blower fan that I took apart because there was something wrong with it and I rewired it so I can use it as an example. And it turned out to be pretty nice. A little five bladed fan, it's plastic housing, so forth. So it's nothing real special, but um, it gives me something repeatable to look at and uh, make sure all my camera stuff is set up properly. So uh, cell phone camera, there's a lot of advantages. Everyone has a cell phone camera. Most of us, it's in our pocket right now. Uh, the cell phone produces a much brighter image. Uh, the image on the front page here, this is a, a high speed camera and it's sampling a thousand frames per second. And I had to have uh, a couple of light panels on this to be able to see uh, what this is. And it's very strange. I mean, the higher um, frame rate you have, the less light that gets through the aperture and everything shifted a little bit toward the blue end of the spectrum, at least in my case for my camera, and um, everything looks kind of muted. In the cell phone, you don't have that. Of course, it doesn't sample as fast. Instead of a thousand frames per second, it's the highest one that we use is 240 frames per second. But at that frame rate, it does pretty much what we want it to do. It has a brighter video image, no artificial lighting. Our LED panels are required for most applications. Um, and obviously cell phones are cheaper than high-speed video cameras. I have a video camera, uh, a real high-speed one that I carry around in a case and I rarely get it out. And I go in a lot of dirty, dusty, uh, messy places. And it's really not something I'd like to bring a five or six thousand ca uh, dollar camera in, and especially when you're taking the lens off and, and things like that. Um, something new, uh, I just bought a tripod and I ended up buying two more after that because uh, they're invaluable. Um, I've broken a lot of tripods. This is a real nice one. Uh, not expensive. The whole thing's about 40 bucks, but it included something that's really nice, uh, a touchless Bluetooth on-off feature. So it's a little button. I can, uh, it's like your car remote. I can turn on and off the camera without touching it, which is huge. Um, we've gone to great lengths trying to get rid of background noise because uh, camera motion or it's vibrating where your tripod is and all kinds of things like that. This really helps uh, having this on-off feature. Um, so, little thing about multiple uh, video modes that are available. These are all iPhone modes. Um, and as cameras get better, you're going to get more uh, sophisticated types of uh, video and uh, resolution and, and frame rate, hopefully. Uh, there's a 720p at 30 frames per second. The 1080p has 30 and 60 frames per second. And these are um, the frequencies, the sample frequencies. So, if you get it in your head that uh, the F max is going to be half of these, now we're we're having problems with two pole, two and four pole motors being able to figure out what's wrong with them uh, because our frame rate is way too low. And there's 4K cameras that are 24, 30, and 60, 
but we really don't have anything usable until we get to the slow-mo setting. So it's a 1080p, there's 120 and 240 frames per second. I think um, that's on all iPhones, but I think in um, Android phones, LG phones, stuff like that, they're in maybe up to 350 frames per second, something like that, but they're, they're pretty close. So if you have any kind of camera, there should be a slow motion feature uh, with enough frame rates to get us where we want to go. And uh, that turns out to be one of the most expensive things in the setup is the camera, the lighting, the uh, tripods, everything that you're buying to support your analysis isn't really required. Um, I started out doing it all really high speed camera stuff and it's cumbersome and started doing uh, the iPhones because it was easy and I, I didn't have to have the uh, LED panels around uh, anymore. And uh, it turns out from a signal processing point of view, uh, I'm a vibration analyst. I look for what's going to be the problem in taking the data and how fast you have to take it and things like that so that I can get good spectrum, good waveform. And I look for that in my, my camera. The Emmyscope ODS videos isn't just a picture taker or a video maker. It has all the signal processing uh, that you've you've seen on really expensive, you know, data collection, multi-channel data collection units, okay? And it's all going right through the, the cell phone. Um, and it's very versatile. Anyway, this is a little more complicated than I wanted, but um, this is a look at the spectrum that came from the fan on the right, on the upper right there. It's a five-bladed fan. It runs at uh, 20... 327 uh, RPM, that's the speed over here. Here are the harmonic frequencies. So those are all multiples of 2327, and they go all the way through the data. Okay, so I have uh, four harmonics, then I have a blade pass frequency, I have another four harmonics, and I have a uh, two times blade pass, and then I have three harmonics, and it cuts off at F max. So my F max here is 528, I think, hertz, which turns out to be 31,710 CPM. So I have this data. I know what the speed is, so I can define every peak based on multiples of running speed, basically. So there's five blades. You get five times RPM is your blade pass frequency. Uh, Ten times RPM is your twice blade pass frequency. I could not find out what these were, and it was driving me absolutely crazy. And there's there's no other frequencies that are associated with the shaft that would correspond to those. And after talking to the vibration uh, vibrant guys, uh, Mark Richardson, uh, he convinced me they're all alias peaks in the spectrum. And there's a little equation here at the top in red, or well above that in black. The alias frequency is n, which is the Nyquist frequency, so it's two times your f max minus the the frequency in the spectrum. Okay, so I had a, uh, I back calculated what these alias frequencies were using this equation. Okay, and what that meant is there's a, an equal frequency, uh, a folding frequency across this F max. So I have an alias frequency here. The amount of frequency range to F max, I should have a mirror image of that on the other side. So this is three times blade pass. Uh, I can't see it in the spectrum, the original spectrum, because it's above F max, but it's there in that transition zone uh, between here and 240 uh, frames per second. So there's a, or not 240, 1,000 frames per second in this. So there are frequencies out there that fold themselves back over inside the F max range. And it's because the uh, phenomena where a high frequency component the frequency spectrum takes the identity of a lower frequency component in the spectrum of the sampled signal. So if we don't sample fast enough, we can't avoid this problem. And if we don't have anti-aliasing filters, which we don't for digital video, um, we can't solve this problem. The best we can do is identify what they are. And this is the hard way. So a lot of you are saying, oh, that's so confusing. It is and it, it kind of plays with your mind a little bit. 
But if we go back into the software, like I'm going to do at the end of this, I'm going to show you the little wizard that does this for you. And it's it makes life very enjoyable when you can uh, understand something that's complicated and get a good uh, good view of how that's done. This is the same fan. Originally, it was uh, uh, taken with uh, the high-speed camera. This is taken with the iPhone. So the iPhone at slow-mo mode, 240 frames per second. My F-Max is 7200 or 120 hertz if you're a hertz person. So there's my F-Max line. Um, I'm going to have some, some harmonics. So it's 2291 RPM, and I get two times that. I get three times that, and then um, I'm done. Okay. There are a couple other peaks in here, and there's one here I still don't know what it is. Um, but these two are alias frequencies. I can go back in and manually calculate what those are and point to what out there is, is causing this. So there's a frequency at 5236 that's caused by four times RPM. Okay, so the distance between three times RPM and here, that four times RPM, is the part that's reflected back. So you can see how symmetric this is right there. It's exactly symmetric. So when I unfold this 5236 along the F max line, it adds to the 7200 and becomes 9163.6. That's my four times RPM. Same thing here. My folding arm is just a little bit longer. So here's 2945. The distance from there to there is, you know, we know this is 7200, so we subtract that much. We add it to the other side and it's at 11454. So the fourth harmonic, the fifth harmonic of turning speed create these artifacts in there if we don't sample fast enough. And we are limited on sampling at, to the 240 frames per second with the iPhone, okay? But regardless, uh, this floor noise, there was one peak in here, there is one more aliasing frequency in this range that would be six times RPM and it's at uh, 650, something like that. Um, I just found that this morning. I'm like, well, there, there has to be one more right here, theoretically, but it's in the noise floor. One of the uh, things about the noise floor here, a lot of this noise is aliasing frequencies. It's noise that's above um, F max that's folded back into the spectrum. Okay, think about that. There's a, there's a lot of frequencies. The more we sample and average, we can cut this down. So I try to uh, take as much data as I can, 15, 20 seconds worth of data, um, and I can sample and uh, uh, average that data until I drop the noise floor uh, enough that I can see these frequencies. Okay. This is the software. So it's the same setup as I just had. The iPhone set up the 240 frames per second. My fan speed is 2291. And I found this 654 CPM uh, aliasing frequency that was, was really low level in, in the noise floor. So what's nice is we move this cursor to the peak we're interested in. This is turning speed of the shaft at 2291. It shows me the harmonics of that, two and three. Okay, just like I did before, it shows me where the aliasing peaks are calculated to be. So I don't even have to go manually calculate this stuff. So if you, uh, if you want to, you can. Uh, this just takes all the guesswork out of it. Okay, so, and one of those peaks that showed up was at uh, 654, which surprised me and I went back and recalculated it, okay? The software picks these peaks out for you. So you just put it on one times RPM, and I had a belt-driven fan, and you just do it in two steps. So you put one uh, uh, set of frequencies on uh, for the motor at 1800, and another set, in this case, it was 1600, something like that. So I'll get two different sets of harmonics and alias peaks that might be in the spectrum. This bottom part, I put a little check mark here under uh, uh, equate expand orders, excuse me, and now I see the three frequencies I originally have. This is my F max line, and these are the unfolded frequencies. So the alias peak right here, 
is rolled over to the other side and it's four times RPM. Uh, alias peak, I guess it's here. That's four times, five times, and six times that show up. Okay, and then we put each of these is in a band cursor, so all the noise floor goes away. So even if uh, we were on the edge of noise like we were, it's peeking out of that noise and I'll be able to animate that frequency. Okay, what are they gonna tell me? Uh, there's all kinds of things with lower frequency harmonics in the in the wave in the spectrum, uh, all kinds of faults. So uh, unbalanced, misalignment, looseness, cock bearings, bent shafts, natural frequencies, um, blade pass frequency, gear mesh frequency potentially, um, a whole series of things that we're going to be able to look at. And this is expanding our frequency capability. We're unfolding this range of uh, harmonics or multiples of turning speed. And it's it's a great tool. Um, this is uh, just a cartoon to give you kind of the thought process in, hey, I got limitation of 240 frames per second. Uh, what is that going to give me for a high speed motor, higher end speed motor? A two pole motor runs just under 3600. So I've chosen a frequency of 3580. I'm going to get, uh, I have 240 frames per second for my, my sample rate, uh, which is uh, 14,400 CPM. Uh, half of that is my F max, okay? So 7,200 or 120 hertz. And that's my folding frequency right there, as well as F max. Um, I have two harmonics. So what's telling me there's a problem here? One times RPM and two times RPM. Uh, I can't address blade pass frequency. I can't address gear mesh frequency. Uh, there's some other uh, looseness uh, mechanisms that won't show up in just the first two harmonics. So I'm kind of limited. I will have, if uh, they're high enough in this transition band, I should have a couple of aliasing frequencies as well, uh, just from uh, the next orders. So this is the three times. So there's my aliasing frequency, my uh, folding over, and three times RPM, and the same thing, four times RPM. Uh, five time and six times RPM, I can't have a folding frequency that's positive anymore. So it goes negative. So these don't exist in my data for this sampling rate. Okay, just the stuff in the transitional band here. Um, but from a, a from an analyst point of view, you want to have as much frequency range as possible. So now if I do unfold these frequencies, uh, I potentially have four harmonics one, two, three, and four that'll show up, and that'll be a little more scientific capability as far as vibration analysis is concerned. This is the same cartoon, but I'm doing a four-pole motor. Now, so those of you that are, don't know about motors, the four-pole, it's the way the motor's wound, and you have four plus, plus and minus magnetic fields in the motor, and they just call it a four-pole or a, a two-pole or what have you. Um, this is just under 1800 RPM, so I, I chose 1790 for my speed of my rotor. So my one times RPM, two times, three times, four times, and I hit my F max. If I take advantage of any artifacts in here, alias frequencies, I can unfold this spectrum and see up to eight times running speed. So now looseness problems that, that generate themselves as a, a whole series of running speed harmonics, those can be better identified. There might be natural frequencies in here that are excited by um, one of these peaks, and that might be something that I would have missed if I didn't have this uh, unfolding capability. And like I mentioned before, anything above 240 or the maximum sample rate will reflect back into the spectrum at a negative value, so really, these don't really uh, appear in the spectrum. Okay, still it's a little messy, I understand. Even more so, this is a, a I didn't write it in there, this is a six pole motor, 1190 RPM, um, just under 1200, and same thing, it's it's better. It's, it's a little lower speed, so I have more harmonics. There's six harmonics here. If I unfold it, there's another six. 
So I have 12 harmonics. I can see all kinds of different uh, problems, synchronous problems, harmonic problems, subsynchronous, and so forth. Okay. Now we get to the fun part. I'm going to go into the software and show you how easy this is. Uh, this is um, a belt-driven fan. It's on a skid. And let me get this a little bit better. It's a little off. Um, I just wanted to get on the peak here. It was zoom too tight. There we go. Now I get a better, a better mode shape or operating shape. So this is a uh, belt-driven motor or belt-driven fan. It's sitting on a skid on the side of the skid that, that we're looking at. It comes out a little bit toward us a little bit, uh, and it's sitting on isolators on all four corners. Um, two on the front were brand new isolators, and the two on the back, were a little hard to get to, so they left the old isolators in. And I believe they're bottoming out. They weren't working really well. Um, I have 1800 RPM motor, so it's a uh, four pole motor, and belt drive, and it goes to a fan running about uh, 1650, I think, RPM. And what happened just about a week and a half ago, uh, the shaft broke, the fan shaft. So we have these bottoming out um, uh, isolators on the back end of the frame here, and it just sheared the shaft after so much vibration. Okay, this was taken, um, and I have contours. Uh, hold on a second. I want to look at the velocity and see what I see. Okay, back to normal. Um, with color on, these were on the maybe 0 0.6, 0 0.7 inches per second. Really high vibration on here. So I put the cut color contours on. I can see the entire frame bouncing. Okay, and the fans going with, or the motors going with it. The you know the shield for the belt drive is going bouncing up and down. Um, but the color is intriguing. We're not even looking at the fan shaft. The motor shaft is is up in the you know, maybe 0.7 inches per second. So much higher than we really want it to be. And in this, in our software, you can go from peak to peak and see the different shapes. So this has a little bit of a twist in the motor and a little bit of bounce. Um, I don't know what the other peaks are. This is uh, thrusting in and out towards us a little bit and so forth. There's a lot of different uh, data in there that you can look at. And I'm just scrolling up through the data on the side here just to see what we have. So we'll go back to 1790, which is uh, turning speed of the motor. Now, um, I've done all my due diligence. What I've done is I've brought the data in. I've sampled it as, as well as I can. Um, I removed the background noise. I've walked through the frequency peaks that I'm interested in. Um, and some of them make sense and some of them don't. Uh, some of them are alias peaks. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to, this is the drop down menu on the side. I'm gonna go under orders filter. So it filters out data from, uh, frequencies from the data block. So it's going to look at my spectrum data block and it's going to pull some of the data out. So I have a, a it, this is just the starting point. Don't freak out for all the dots, but um, this is what I want to move around and this is my running speed. So I want to check out what is, is associated with running speed. It shows me the harmonics associated with that. And We'll do some others. We have another speed here, which is 1670, which is the fan speed, and it has three harmonics after it, four total. Uh, there was something, let's see if I can find it. I had a peak at six, 
Yeah, this is 700. Oops. So this might be the alias peak in the spectrum. It does have some harmonics that peak up, but we'll have to see what that is. So I'm gonna have to do this twice. I'm gonna have to go in uh, and determine which peak I'm interested in. And let's just do one here. This is 1670 uh, in the top. I'm going up to 72 CPM or 120 Hertz. So this is my F max all the way to the end here. Same thing at the bottom. This is the F max. So all I'm able to get from this uh, 1670 uh, CPM is four harmonics, uh, including the first one. Okay, I'm gonna expand the orders. And right away, it shows me what, where the alias peaks should be, if there's something in there. And then unfolds the spectrum. So these black dots are the alias frequencies. The red dots are the um, uh, harmonic multiples of whatever turning speed I'm interested in. And we've unfolded it down here. So 7200, my F max is right here, and we've unfolded it to 14,400. So now it moves all these artifacts, these uh, uh, alias frequencies back into the um, frequency range. So the first four peaks are below F max, the next four are above F max, where, and they're where the alias frequency sh should appear if we had enough sampling. Okay, I'm gonna do one more, move it over here. And this is my 1800 RPM band and you see the alias frequencies that'll pop out here's where i've unfolded so my one two three four times running speed are these four peaks and then uh the last four are the the artifacts from the aliasing frequencies High, so they're much higher frequency so uh eight harmonics of the uh, of the motor speed if i accept this data It'll think for a minute, and then it'll go back in. And so down at the bottom, you see where uh, it's unfolded, this frequency range. And I can go in, and uh, I have to move this again. You guys can't see it, but there's a block of controls sitting on top of my, my display box here. And I can go, it's in, uh, uh, it's in mills or uh, displacement. I can turn the cursor to velocity or acceleration if I want um, with this display mode. What I actually wanted was the zoom feature so I can look at these a little closer. Uh, maybe I need more. All right. No, oh, it was right on the peak. Okay. So I got 0.363 inches per second. It's my first band at uh, 1790. And I can see the, the shape of the machine bouncing up and down. I can see two times. I can see how the frame's moving on the three times and so forth. Let's go to four. And a lot of uh, vertical bouncing motion and a little bit of off axis twist when you're, uh, when you see some of the other harmonics. But it's a good one to learn with. So I, every once in a while I run into a night, a machine that really shows a lot of stuff. And this is one, one of them. And I keep it so that uh, it's my, if I don't use the software for a while, like everybody else, I atrophy of the brain and I need to go back and step through some, some more simple uh, components and get back up to speed. But uh, this is a good machine for doing that type of learning. And they have good operating shapes. Well, I think, that's what I wanted to show you this time. Oh, there is one more new feature under the contour colors. You can edit the contours. 
And I usually like to go, let's see, seven. No, eight. We're going to do eight. So what works for me is assigning these colors so they look like reds for bad, oranges pretty bad, yellows alarm, and so forth. And green's good. And if I do this right, it should look pretty cool. And I can, uh, you know, scale it to some severity level. And I'll try that. So there's interpolate colors. You can make as many as you want. I do two of these sets because it interpolates them better for some reason. And you get a, a totally different look at your data. Okay, up at the top, this is in um, displacement. I believe I can uh, go to velocity. No, well, it's in displacement. It didn't change for some reason. Uh, probably a little bug. Um, if you have any questions, uh, like I mentioned before, this is a lot, and there's some definitions, and you, you got to see it to believe it. But um, if you want a PDF version of this, uh, feel free to give me a call, or don't give me a call. Give Mark a call, and he can download it. <laughs> But if you yeah, have any questions, any questions, I'd out. love to love to answer anything. Give me a shot. We do have one question, Dan. Uh, when using a video, will your Nyquist factor always be two? Uh, in this case, yes. There's uh, no real uh, reason to do uh, a higher, like 2.56, like they do in analyzers, because we're still going to have aliases. Uh, you can't um, you can't attack it that way in a video. It's not the same format. The accelerometer's processing is allows them to filter and change things before they go into uh, a digitizing mode. The digitizing mode uh, in a video is is all at once, so you don't get that uh, that buffer that you get in signal other signal processing. Two is good enough. Nothing else? Uh, let's see. We've got a few coming in here. Was the fan shaft failure in bending or torsional? Uh, bending must have been. It was a torsional failures are at 45 degrees uh, in the fracture. This was uh, a lot straighter than that. And it was more bending with the banging, you know, bottoming out those accelerometers, I believe. Uh, no questions at this time. How about you, Mark? You get a few any folks questions? Here. Thank you. Uh, no. It was. It was. <laughs> it was all. Oh, here we go. I got another question right here. I have ODS video, but different layout. What version of this, uh, what version is this ODS video? This is the NXT version up in the top here, Emmyscope NXT. The other version is uh, VES. So uh, they both have similar capabilities. Um, I used to work exclusively with the VES and I like the NXT better now uh, after I played with it for a while. Um, Give me a call if you're if you're interested. I think you can download either one of them. Yeah, with the current version, uh, if you already have purchased ODS videos, uh, when you um, download the VES version, you will also get the the NXT version. I believe it's also on their website too. You can go and download it straight from the website if you want to uh, uh, utilize the NXT. But it is. It, you you if you purchase ODS videos you get the VES version and the NXT version. NXT is is kind of our new and improved uh, user interface, which um, it, it's it's only a few months old now. But uh, as you can see, it's it's a little bit cleaner. It kind of drops um, some of the other menus that you 
typically see with the uh, the older VES version. This is a little bit cleaned up, and um, and as Dan is saying, it's it's his preferred preferred version now for ODS videos. It just you know some of the features they they just put in like the background uh, noise removal and and things are really nice and little you know little inconsistencies from growing pains in the VES, but uh, they're it works really well. It's slick. I like it. Uh, a couple of questions coming in about how do you get a PDF copy of this presentation? Uh, you can email us again at sales at vibetech.com and I'd be happy to uh, send that out to you. Um, or you can, you can also, email Dan at, yeah, yeah. Dan at modalguy at aol.com. Modalguy at aol.com. That's Dan's email address. So. Yeah, and if you want, that, uh, like you guys have a video, a video should be up in an hour or two, right? Where you have a YouTube video? Uh, it took me a little long. Usually it takes about three hours to process the video. Um, and then I um, put it into our, our YouTube template. So probably get that up tomorrow. Because uh, I got to do a little bit of editing as well before we uh, upload that to YouTube. Okay. Any other questions? We've got a little bit of time here. If anybody has some additional questions um, about the webinar, or if you have some other questions about ODS videos that may, you know, you may have um, unrelated to the webinar here, we'd be happy to answer that. Okay. Nothing else coming in right this time, Dan. You got any? Uh, I I think they're all messed questions. iPhone works for big. Yeah, <laughs> Percy's <laughs> asking if the iPhone will work with big structures like a wind turbine. Have you ever ever used? Uh, I know sure. we've done wind turbines. I'm sure that we you've used an iPhone. Obviously. Yeah, I I would invest in a in a um a tripod and uh, a Bluetooth uh, switch on and off, and you should be fine. I've, I've done it with a big camera on a tripod. Don't try to hold it uh, and take a video. That it's impossible, especially when you're looking up. Uh, you're going to be shaking all over the place. So put it on a tripod and yeah. um, shoot it from. Actually, a little thing that helped me was not straight on. You'd have to be so far away, but uh, you get probably most of the information by shooting straight up from the base, uh, maybe 20 feet from the base of the structure and you'll get a nice shot of the blades going by and so forth. And, you know, like we haven't even talked about the uh, time waveform animation and that really turns out good for the uh, wind turbine applications. Okay, no other questions at this time. Dan, you got anything else you want to uh, wrap up with? No, I think I'm good. Um, it's a it's a bargain. It's other competitors out there, fifty, sixty thousand for this. And uh, with a camera, if you bought a high speed camera, it'd be a little over twenty grand. If you just use your iPhone, like I never use my other camera anymore, save your money, and it's fourteen grand, something like that for. Uh, the best software in the world that's all i got yeah and i did want to mention that um on our website as well we have uh, monthly subscriptions so you can if you want to try out ods videos uh for a month you can download the uh or subscribe um to ods videos you can get a uh 30 day uh, subscription or a 30 day license uh, and you can find that right on our website um, at uh, vitech.com and then just click on the store. And that goes for all of our packages as well. You can see them all out there. And uh, if you want to just purchase, that's a, an inexpensive way to uh, try it out before you, uh, you know, you make the purchase um, of a perpetual license. So certainly encourage you to, to give that a go as well. Great. Well, Dan, I think we uh, will wrap it up with that. We should have some music yeah. that goes in there and slowly filters us out.
<laughs> that's right. Well, I do add that in the uh, on the YouTube video. That's part of my editing. Oh, you do? I, didn't know that. <laughs> I do have a little bit of music in there. So <laughs> you're so cool. Excellent. Uh, all right, everybody. Well, thank you again for joining us. And uh, we will get another one of these uh, webinars uh, spun up here next month. So stay tuned to your emails and um, take a look at the YouTube, our YouTube site, if you want to uh, take a look at some of the older uh, webinars that we've done. A big, big uh, collection of videos out there. I think we're over 25 now, um, just for the ODS videos. So um, take a look at that. Uh, with that, we will sign off and I hope everybody has a great weekend and we'll see you next time. Thanks.